A little while ago, we got genuinely worried that North Korea was now bringing troops to bear to support Putin in the Ukraine war. Uh, I think we've learned something else about the quality or the status of those troops, haven't we? We have. Um, it's been rumbling for a while, but America this week has confirmed that there's up to 10,000 North Korean troops have been doing training in Russia, certain military equipment that they've been using from the West. But it's also quite interesting because they kept saying that these were high quality, not quite special forces, but they're elite forces from North Korea. That would have been a worry that they were being introduced. It's worth pointing out, though, a couple of things have emerged this week. First of all, they haven't been involved in war since 1953, so they have no uh, military experience. More worrying, though, is apparently a lot of those forces are emaciated. They're not fed properly. Mm. And one of the things you think, OK, that's, is that really true? A story emerged that back in 2017, a North Korean soldier managed to try and escape from North Korea, made his way across the armed zone, got shot several times, but survived. South Korean doctors treated him for his bullet wounds, but they found a massive 27 centimeter uh, intestinal worm in his body, a load of other parasites and stuff like that, all of which horribly malnourished was because apparently they eat a lot of corn and don't have a balanced diet. Hmm. And you sort of take it for granted that soldiers particularly are normally well-fed because you need them to represent hmm. your country. So I think they'll be, there's no doubt that those North Korean soldiers will feel proud. They think they're representing hmm. their country overseas. Hmm. The worry is if they get used on the front line and they're emaciated and they don't speak the language and they're not battle-hardened, how are they going to return hmm. home? Hmm. Not on their feet. Well, that's really interesting. Of course, there's the other fact that you mentioned before, which I think has something to do with being a soldier in a dictatorship uh, where you're basically taking orders, and that seems to constrain your ability to perform, both from the point of view of the latitude you've got, but also the time it takes for command to flow down and back up and so on. So is that still a factor in, in your mind? It is a bit. Well, I understand now that of the 10,000, apparently 500 officers were sent and a, and a small handful of generals. Um, but none of that solves the command and control, the language issue, the training issue, and how they're actually mm. going to perform on the battlefields. And I think the worry is that there's even been some reports of Russian soldiers going, how are we going to use these guys? Mm. And if you're feeling that, you don't want yourself to be put at risk. You've got to be pushing these bodies at risk. And the slight worry, which we don't know the background to, is that how do you stop them all fleeing, the North Korea's soldiers escaping? Apparently their families have all been collected together, probably to stop them talking. But in a more sinister way, you imagine just how these soldiers were briefed. Don't run away, don't escape, because if you do, your family's going to pay. Mm. And therefore, it feels like they are on operation certain death. And that just is a horrible way. North Korea won't care. They're gaining currency, they're gaining influence, they're gaining weapons help and potentially help with their nuclear program. Mm. Putin won't help. It's more soldiers to throw into the mix. Mm. The poor individuals that are caught in the middle of this, mm. that's the people to feel mm. sorry for. Well, sometimes in life, if you put more into something on the basis that it might make it work better, sometimes it doesn't work as well because you create chaos, particularly if people are speaking a different language or different rules of engagement and you know different doctrine and so on. So, you know, it could make it worse. I'm, I'm almost certain as a military guy, they are not, Russia's are not famous for using clever tactics and technology. Mm. That's why they've called it a meat grinder. Mm. They've just been throwing bodies, losing a hell of a lot of people. So October was the worst casualty figures for Russia so far. On average, over 1,500 people either killed or wounded every single day. It's very difficult to see how North Korea is going to step that up. Mm. It's almost certainly it's going to make matters worse. Mm. They're going to be just thrown in at, at, at the meat grinder. And it's also not clear whether they're going to be focused on in Ukraine or there are reports that they're focusing on Kursk region to help push um, the Ukrainians out. But however you do it, they're going to be on the front foot. They're going to be exposed. They're going to be out of the mm. trenches. Mm. That all spells disaster.